Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Wednesday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and last night the Mets bats were asleep again as they dropped the opening game of a three-game series of an all-important three-game series with a team they're chasing for the second wild card, the Chicago Cubs. I'm going to talk about last night's game, blunders made by Mickey Calloway, who else, uh, and a couple of historic, uh, at least one historic uh, accomplishment by our boy, Pete Alonzo. I'm going to talk about that and more on today's show. There was a point in time where um, I, I didn't have to talk about Mickey Calloway very much, and it's because he wasn't doing dumb things. Um, <laughs> and on yesterday's show, I, I sort of spelled out what, I mean, it, it, it wasn't rocket science. Um, it isn't rocket science. It's, it's plain blind logic. If you watch the team, you know that the right decision as to how to construct the lineup is to put the guys who are hitting the best when the offense is struggling in the best positions to actually score some runs. And keeping Todd Frazier in the lineup, whether he's batting eighth or else, is not the way to do it. And what does Mickey Calloway do? He justifies his decision to go with Todd Frazier because he wants to have a strong infield defense. And you know what? On paper, that logic is actually pretty sound. I, I, I can't even fault him for the logic. The problem is that the game isn't played on paper. It's played in reality. And Todd Frazier has not been that great in the field of late. Certainly no much better, no much better, not much better, not much better, than Jeff McNeil would have been in his place. And ironically, Juan Ligaris, who's batting like 250 points better, if not more, uh, better than Todd Frazier over the last month or so, um, sits on the bench, and Michael Conforto, not a center fielder, forced to play center field. And what ended up, what ended up happening in last night's game was that Conforto got a lot of balls hitting his, his way in center field, and not a lot of the blame for that goes on Marcus Stroman, who wasn't able to keep the ball on the ground, even though he's a ground ball pitcher. Um, but Conforto miss, misses a couple of those balls that maybe Juan Lagares gets to. You know, maybe Juan Lagares makes a play. Maybe Juan Lagares is able to get himself in a position where he can rob that home run. That I think it was Addison Russell that hit it. Or maybe it was Javi Baez. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Um, two little wall scrapers. Uh, one of them to right, one of them to, to right center. Actually, I think it was Chris Bryant. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> you know, Lagares not playing is on Mickey. That decision is on Mickey. And Mickey ain't going to be here next year. Because every chance he's had to prove that he can do this, he's overmanaged and over-tinkered and made stupid decisions. And last night's lineup was a, was a stupid decision. Let's see how he doubles down on it tonight, because I'm sure he will. Um, because he's stubborn like that, at least he seems to be, where this is the way it's going to be. Got to get Frazier going. Got to keep him in there. I don't get it. I also didn't get the decision to go to Chris Mazza in uh, in the seventh inning, or sorry, the eighth inning. Um, now look, Mazza gave up one run, right? But we talk about bad optics all the time, and it was a Sandy Alderson thing, actually. We used use the phrase bad optics to describe a lot of things. And look, it's bad optics to bring a guy who's pitched in a grand total of five games in the major leagues. It's a bad optics to bring that guy into a game when your team is scuffling and losing by three runs, and you're saying, you know what, I don't care how many more runs we get down by. Well, what does that say about your faith in your offense to come back from a three-run deficit? Something they've done a few times over the last month now. What does it say? Where's the thought process in that? And I'm sure, and I don't, I didn't get to see Mickey's post game, and I didn't really want to, because I don't want to see him talk his way out of this. But I'm sure he said something like, "Well, we got to save the rest of the guys in the bullpen. Mazza did a great job for us." I'm sure that's what he said. And th I'm sorry, but that's just wrong. You're trying to win these games. This is the team you're chasing for the second wild card. Fortunately, the Mets got lucky last night in that the only team they lost ground to was the Cubs because the uh, Pirates ended up coming back and beating the Phillies 5-4. to four. So the Phillies didn't gain any ground on the Mets. It's still a two-game deficit. Um, sorry, it's, now it's three games behind the Cubs. Um, that's the only team that jumped on them. So uh, they still trail the Phillies by a half game. They're still behind the Cubs. But, you know, 
it, it, it's it, it's baffling to me that Mickey Callaway is in 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 his most important stretch as a manager, and after almost two full years of doing this job, he hasn't learned the simplest things, which is to stop overthinking things, play the hot hand. That's it. Play the hot hand. That's it. You know, you can he can say he wants to ignore analytics all he wants. But whether you're looking at analytics or whether you're looking at the gut test or the eye test or whatever, all of those tests, all of those metrics will tell you that Todd Frazier should not be in this lineup every day. Period. And that better not be the case tonight. He better not be manning third base tonight. Not that I have any control over what's going to happen if he does, but I'll just, I'll be mad. So... That's the bad from last night. There is some good. First good, Wilson Ramos extended his hitting streak to 20 games. Um, he has quietly been putting together a really nice season, uh, doing exactly what it was expected him uh, of him uh, when he was signed. He is an absolute offensive threat, and unfortunately, he doesn't seem to get on uh, get these big hits when there's guys in scoring position of late. Um, so I, I don't want to say it's a shallow hitting streak because it's certainly not. I mean, 20-game hitting streak is no joke. Um, but, but, you know, he, he has, he had two hits last night and I think no one was on base in both cases. I think there were two outs in both cases. So, you know, whatever it is what it is, I guess. Um, but I'm happy to see him hitting and I'm happy to see him extending this streak. He's now 10 off the club mark set by Moises Alou in 2007 of 30 games. I don't know if he's going to reach that plateau, but we'll see. Uh, the other plateau that was eclipsed last night, of course, is Pete Alonso. Uh, Pete Alonso hit his 42nd home run to provide the lone run for the New York Mets last I'm sorry, that's not even true. J.D. Davis hit a meaningless ninth inning home run as well, so it was a 5-2 final. But um, no matter, uh, J.D. Davis, or sorry, Alonso's um, 42nd home run gave the Mets a brief lead uh, in a game where Marcus Stroman could not pitch his uh, could not pitch to back up his words. So Stroman talks a good game, but he's yet to really have that signature moment, and he's yet to really back any of that up on the field. Um, and I didn't mean to segue into him, but I forgot to mention him earlier when I was talking about Mickey. Um, my ire toward Mickey took my full attention over what went wrong last night. Uh, but back to Pete. Uh, 42 home runs now. He is now 10 home runs off of Aaron Judge's rookie record of 52 in a rookie campaign and there's 29 games left at this point I think or 30 um, that's one home run every three days that's that's very doable very doable so while the 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 craziness of Mets Twitter considers the season over because the Mets lost four in a row. And look, it's not good, but the season's certainly not over. Um, no matter what happens, we have to remember that we got to witness a historic season by Pete Alonso. And he is now tied also for the Major League lead in home runs with 42. He might end up winning that crown, the home run crown for the season. He might end up breaking Judge's record or at least tying it. Um, Jeff McNeil might win the batting title. Uh, Jacob DeGrom might win the Cy Young again. There's been a lot of really good stuff around this team, and it just sucks that we don't have a manager that is not is unable to, to, to not cost his team games. It just sucks. I'm more down than I thought I would be this morning, uh, particularly when you think that we've got Syndergaard on the mound tonight and DeGrom tomorrow, so still in a position to take two games out of three from the Cubs. But at the end of the day, the, it's it's about the bats because the, the pitching staff, for the most part, has done the job. Um, they've, they've kept teams off the board. Uh, as I said about the Braves series this past weekend, I mean, the, you can't ask for much more from the Mets pitching staff outside of what happened with Wheeler on Saturday. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the team pitched, the team played extremely well. Uh, from a pitching standpoint. Just the offense wasn't there. So the, the offense needs to wake up and wake up soon. And again, getting Todd Frazier an automatic out out of the lineup is going to go a long way to helping that. So we'll see what happens tonight. See if Mickey pisses me off again when I see the lineups. And uh, we'll go from there. I'll be back tomorrow to recap tonight's game. Hopefully, hopefully, 
putting the Mets back in the right direction in the win column with Syndergaard on the mound. So that'll be it for today. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.